Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it's not going to be all old world news today, but something rather big for the Total War Warhammer 3 game. Because one of the mods that you've been waiting for since the game pretty much released is finally here! OVM Lost Factions Araby. The sands rise once again and we finally have it here. It's a really fun faction. I've been able to play this in an early access period. A massive thank you to all the lovely people at OVN as they know that I've been waiting for this for a long long time so let's not waste any time let's talk about the factions let's talk about all the new stuff and let's have some fun so there's three legendary characters that you can play with one of them being Fatandira she's got a lot of faction effects and lord effects so let's start off with the faction effects decide about Fatandira's allegiance and side with her god the tomb king Tutankhamun, or the people of Araby you can honor your allegiance and return Numa's capital to gain faction wide bonuses however you will receive temporary debuffs if you betray Numa's by attacking them diplomatic relations plus 25 with Numa's diplomatic relations plus 10 with tomb kings enables recruitment of certain tomb king units Control plus free for all provinces, hero recruit rank plus free for Hashishins, and finally upkeep minus 15% for nomad trackers, Jazales, Southland warriors, camel lancers, desert riders, camel archers, and camel Jazale units. When we start looking towards the Lord of X, we have the following. Ambush success chance plus 25% Lord's Army, Ammunition plus 20% Lord's Army, and Attribute Stalk for Nomad Trackers, Jazales, Southland Warriors, Camel Lancers, Desert Riders, Camel Archers, and Camel Jazale units for Lord's Army. That's quite a lot of bonuses, but she's here to do some damage, and she looks pretty damn cool too. Her unique skill line is pretty stacked up with loads of bonuses everywhere, where you'll be able to upgrade quite a lot of your cavalry units, which, yeah, pretty useful considering where you are, it's a lot of open field, you'll be able to get some diplomatic bonuses, some very, very strong items too, uh, some local area bonuses like control, uh, getting some extra regeneration, your growth is going to really be decent here with this character. And as you can tell from all the abilities that she's got below, she's going to be a bit of a hybrid, very good at range, very very good at range, and also have some melee abilities too, so you can kind of kit her both ways depending on how you prefer. And to be honest, she's pretty good at damage. You can get more or less elven archery skills from her essentially, which is pretty damn good. If you like range heavy factions, you're probably going to like her the most, the three of them are so drastically different in terms of how they function on the battlefield, which really gives it this awesome feeling. It's really, really special. Again, when you're looking towards a mod like OVN, it's nothing but pure quality, right? Like, it's freaking huge. You'll also have access to a new mechanic, which is kind of cool. It gives me vibes of... Sorry about that, I had to try and remember his name. It was Shamuka from the uh, Nanman, who kind of played at both sides. So you can choose if you want to be more Arabian there, or if you want to deal more with the Tomb Kings. You'll get loads of bonuses there for both. I'm not sure if that's what the modders were inspired by, but it gives me that vibe, and it's kind of cool. Uh, obviously a not direct copy of the mechanic, but it definitely has that feeling for me, and yeah, I'm all for it. It gives you some variety if you want to go for a little bit of a mix with Arabians and ancient Nahakarans. This is unique to her, by the way, so not only are you getting access to a unique faction, uh, well, race in general, but you're also getting some variety between all the factions too. The next character is the Golden Magus, another character from Dreadfleet, which is a really nice uh, little throwback there. So let's go into the faction effects. Destroy, sack, hunt, treasure, and raid to build a reputation at sea versus other Vampire Coast factions and collect sea shanties. Yes, you're going to play like the Vampire Coast, and I think that that is a perfect implementation because, I mean, the Vampire Coast is pretty much a Dreadfleet DLC, let's be honest there. Uh, diplomatic relations plus 50 with the Pirates of Sartosa. Income from sacking settlements plus 20%. Income from slaves plus 5%. Immune to high seas, reef, and storm attrition for all armies, which is pretty good. Lord effects are the following. Has access to shipbuilding. Again, kind of linking it up to the Vampire Coast campaign, which is awesome. Enables flaming magical attacks for Corsairs. Uh, in Lord's Army, then Leadership plus 10 for Corsair units in Lord's Army, and Weapon Strength plus 20% for Corsair units in Lord's Army. Again, very heavily focused here on a Vampire Coast theme, which I'm all for because I love the Vampire Coast campaign. So seeing it with this character, which by the way, in the trailer for the Vampire Coast, uh, they kind of alluded to him being dead, which is really sad because cool character, right? 
We all want the cool characters. The character's also quite unique, where you've got a lore of magic, which is kind of mixed laws there. You've got like Tide Call, Kiss of the Deep, but you've got the Burning Head too. You've got some unique skill lines there, which one locks out the other, which will give you a reason to play as the character twice. Again, super keen. You've got some awesome items too, and a camel mount. I mean, who doesn't want that? By the way, the mounts and the animals, like the hippos, yes, they're hippos. Uh, absolutely amazing. And there's an elephant with a fez, which is absolutely adorable. This is, again, just showing off such a level of love that has been put into this mod, and just... So much fun stuff. I really am blown away by everything. This character obviously is not great at melee combat, but if you keep him behind and start casting, you're pretty much good to go. He'll get a little bit better once you start adding in your, you know, special items and so on. Uh, overall, great character. I, I've enjoyed all three, so I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I've been waiting for this mod for a <laughs> long, long time, and it's finally here, which... It should be live by the time that I'm posting this video, so yeah. So with this character, you'll get access to shipbuilding, which will make you very mobile. This is very, very cool with these types of characters. It's one of these things that uh, needs to be used more by CA, if I could uh, be honest there. But yeah, everything is there. You've got a nice big chunk of your roster. Uh, you've got some infrastructure buildings too, and a unique building. So you are comparable to that of Count Noctilus and pretty much all the others. You are starting in Lustria, by the way. This is in the vanilla Immortal Empires, which is going to make sure that you're going to be fighting quite a bit. Naturally, you want the movement, right? So a character like this when you're dealing with Gorok, when you're dealing with pretty much everything that is very inhospitable to you, it is quite the benefit. That's the most I can say. But yeah, in terms of a faction mechanic, what you do have here is the uh, pieces of eight. And you've got bonuses directly for you, so it's not going to be just focusing on like the Vampire Co stuff. You will be able to get some Royal Gins, for example. You'll get loads of benefits towards some of your heroes and uh, character bonus XP. It's basically reliving the Vampire Coast campaign, and I am all for it. This is fantastic. I'm super happy for this. Which is funny because this is something that we talked about a while back where using reusing mechanics is actually a very valid thing to do when it fits with the theme. And finally we have the character that I've been playing the most, Sultan Jafar, because I mean who doesn't want Jafar? He looks amazing, right? Obviously it's a bit of a throwback to the whole uh, Disney thing with the uh, serpent staff and so on, but this is Warhammer and it's supposed to be a meme, right? So let's go to the faction effects. Those who engineered Jafar's downfall shall now pay the price of their hubris, expel the foreigners, and take war to their lands once more. Sultan Jafar shall rule all. Then we've got diplomatic relations, minus 40 with the Tomb Kings. Diplomatic relations, minus 40 with Fegan's Errantry, Knights of the Flame, Knights of Origo, and Jared's Errantry. The Bretonians do not like you. Lord Recruit Rank plus 2, you need that. Research Rate plus 10%, Income from Trade Terrace plus 25%, and in the Lord Effects we have Passive Ability Guardian for Palace Guard Units in Lord's Army, Upkeep minus 50% for Palace Guards Units in Lord's Army, and Charge Bonus plus 10% for Lord's Army. It's a pretty fun one here, because you're going to get into a lot of wars very, very early on. When we start looking towards Jafar's uh, abilities and someone upstairs is throwing around a lot of stuff, we've got a lot of bonuses towards like control, uh, extra recruitment reduction, casualties captured post-battle, uh, a lot of bonuses towards your like really heavy hitters too, which I think is kind of cool because you're going to need that as you start expanding. I mean, after you deal with the Tomb Kings, you've got Scarbrand, you've got all the Orcs, uh, you've got bonuses towards fighting loads of Order Factions too, which is going to help you out quite a bit. Overall, yeah, he is in a pretty good spot. You've got Serpent Staff. He can turn into a Djinn, by the way. I'm going to let you guys discover that. Naturally, when it comes to this, you won't have everything, but you will... Uh, get a good gist of what's coming. There's also one skill which will give you loads of bonuses with the Skaven and with the Disciples of Zinj. So at least you have some friends, which um, if you play on harder difficulties, you're going to kind of want because, um, yeah, you're not the most likable person in Warhammer Fantasy, uh, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but it's definitely something super cool. And yeah, I mean, you've got some really good bonuses overall. Some Really, this is my favorite character of the three. It depends, obviously, on your styling and your likes, but yeah, definitely my favorite. 
Now, you do have a few unique mechanics for Sultan Jafar, one of them being a uh, trade route, so, you know, caravans. This is very, very useful if you want to, like, start picking up some extra cash, getting some influence out there. I'm a big fan of this. I'm a really big fan uh, because at the end of the day, you know, Araby is supposed to be known as the trader nation, and since Jafar is, like, the Grand Sultan, it makes sense for him to have it. And lastly, you have the Reconquest of Araby, and I'm leaving it like this, just so you know. Uh, if you're using like a 4K monitor or you're upscaling a little bit, which is what I do, um, unfortunately, it does bog out on the map, but you have all the details there. It works very similar to that of uh, Alariel's mechanics, so you're going to have to capture some certain locations in Araby, but you're also going to have to get rid of some factions, and that will start then providing some bonuses for you. Overall, this is really, really fun, uh, because it's... All in your general vicinity, you're not going to take that long to to take it out. Arkan and pretty much most of these Bretonian factions over here, they're not really a problem if you just start destroying them with as much, um, let's not say chaos magic, it's a little throwback to the lore there, because obviously Araby, there was a little bit of hints that uh, Jafar was very Zinchian, but yeah, use your magic and destroy them as they come. You know what I absolutely love? The attention to detail that these modders put in, even when it's something like the technology tree, the artwork in the background, you know, you've got the crescent moon and so on, which is very well known for that type of real life culture. So it's really bringing the historical aspect, if you didn't know Warhammer Fantasy, does have that whole turning history into fantasy thing, and this is super cool. It's a pretty decent style um, tech tree. So you've got four different start points and you start going in there. Each two start points eventually join up, once again creating a crescent moon. This stuff is just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you've got loads of bonuses there. So everything that you're going to need is covered in this tech tree. It might not be the largest one, but it definitely covers all bases. And yeah, I mean, who doesn't love this? I'm a big fan. Um, uh, everything I've been fanboying, right? Like I'm telling you, I've been fanboying about this mod constantly. Uh, everyone has known that I've been keeping an eye on the developer stuff. And it's just because the OVN team are just that good. Not only that, but this is a faction that I've always wanted in not only uh, Total War, but also the tabletop and so on. We'll likely never get it in Total War. I've kind of made my peace with that. But it's still here, you know? The modders have done a tremendous amount of work, and you'll see when we start looking towards the unit rosters, it's absolutely insane. I can't even imagine how much time and effort has gone to this, because yes, we had the Warhammer 2 mod, but this isn't a simple port of Warhammer 2. This is essentially building it from the ground up, and... Yeah, man, <laughs> it's so freaking cool. Uh, so yeah, let's start moving on. I do apologize for fanboying a lot, but I wanted to show you guys the tech tree, and this is the perfect time for me to be able to do so. But that's not all. We do have other things to talk about. Like, for example, we do have a brand new mechanic for Araby, and it might not sound or look brand new, but it is a Grand Bazaar. So you've got all the uh, merchant stuff, and this is the usual stuff that you can imagine from... A normal item shop like the Tomb Kings have and so on. However, there is the slave market and as you start killing off factions, so you actually have to start fighting these factions, you can get some powerful auxiliaries to be honest. So extra leadership, extra whatever you want, but it's tied to the factions that you're fighting and I think that's absolutely amazing. What a way to get something and just upgraded a little bit more. Kind of like what happened in Vanilla, right? With CA and uh, the Grand Cafe caravan being upgraded for that of the Chorfs. Same kind of gist, and it's super cool to be able to see something like this just come to life and just be expanded upon. Again, amazing. You might also notice slave markets. Well, this is a really cool system. You can basically instant get slaves. They're not the best units, obviously, but the last army that you had clicked on after you get into the little bit of combat, then you can click on it. It costs you some money, naturally. But yeah, instant. You can keep clicking it. There's no cooldown. You can get yourself a pretty stacked army, which is going to let you panic recruits in case you need it. Uh, if you're playing Jafar, you're going to need it at the very beginning. Because you're going to be fighting literally everything. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a tough campaign at the beginning. Now, construction is going to be very human, as you can tell. You know, it's the standard stuff. However, there are a few differences. You will notice that some of the buildings will have some uh, little mentions of like, oh, this is going to give you urban elite control or no bad control. And how that works is a brand new system here, very similar to that of 
Well, very similar to that of Harmony, and the specific buildings there will also give you some more bonuses, either to your military buildings, some of them, or your infrastructure buildings, and that's all dictated by just how you build up through your campaign. If is it going to be more elite? Is it just going to be more nomadic? It's something that you can track from your standard screen. It's literally on the top there. And yeah, it's super cool. I actually really like this. It's a very interesting way to introduce a mechanic like this. And yeah, I mean, I can't really praise this enough. I really can't. Everything about this feels like DLC quality, right? This is what we expect from big race stuff, right? And it's just so cool to see it all here, see it just playable now. You guys can download it from the description below, but there's still some more things to talk about, so don't you disappear just yet. Naturally, we have to start talking about Lord Choices, so obviously we have the Seek over here, which is a melee-focused Lord. You can get them on a Barded War Horse, a Pegasus, and a Royal War Elephant. You've also got some skills there where you can boost up certain troops of your army, so you can kind of cater them how you want. This is the generic melee Lord, which is pretty well stacked in how it stands. Looks absolutely amazing. The whole roster looks freaking awesome, by the way. And we'll be talking about the roster in just a little bit, because there's a lot to talk about, and I don't think I'm going to have this video ready for the embargo. <laughs> This is the problem between Old World and just constantly playing Araby because I've been playing this mod when I should have been making a video. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, my time management skills. But there is another Lord choice. Obviously, you do have access to a Spellcaster. This is the Grand Visor and a Vizier, sorry. And you've got access to a brand new Lore of Magic also. You've got access to a few different Laws of Magic, don't you worry. So you can play around with Lore of Heavens, you can play around with Lore of Fire, and the Lore of Life too, but for me, it's the Lore of the Jinn. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second, but obviously you do have Flying Cowpits, Camel Mounts, amazing, and uh, Jinn Chariots. There are a lot of unique things. This is its own fully fleshed out faction, by the way. So on par with that of the Chorfs, uh, which is just, special, right? It's just absolutely special. When it comes to the lore of the Jinn, you've got some damaging spells, you've got some hexes. It's exactly what you can expect from an Arabian lore, to be honest, which is perfect. It's very focused on getting a little bit of damage out there, and you can do some summons too. There's a summon for a spearman, not a skeleton. I don't know why I was thinking spearman, a uh, skeleton spearman. This will give you good reason to experiment. Obviously, modded factions have their own unique things, I know some people watch my channel that aren't really into mods, but believe me, this is one that you really, really, really want to play. I really wouldn't put this on par with like the really devastating laws, but it's definitely up there that it can do quite a little bit of damage, especially if you know how to use it, because you do have some hexes that also you can upgrade, you know, and turn them into like proper damaging stuff. Uh, it again depends on you, but yeah, big one here. So we do have access to some generic heroes also, one of them being the Hashishin, which is essentially an assassin hybrid, a uh, little bit of range there, pretty good damage also, and yeah, it's good for killing off characters. It's exactly what you want it for. It looks absolutely amazing too, and I'm going to be saying absolutely amazing in terms of general aesthetic a lot in this video, so I do apologize if it gets annoying, but yeah, it's, it's super cool. Assassin type heroes are very, very useful, especially as you're going to be dealing with a lot of enemies, sniping out that character does really help. If you're curious about them, you can also start a campaign with all the characters. Each of them has one of the specific hero types available at launch. Jafar has a special one though, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's really, really cool on how there's so much um, just variety in terms of everything. The factions are the same, but they play a little bit different, and that's obviously quite a benefit. Jafar has a legendary hero, but it is a beefed up version of the standard Emir, so we're not going to have to look at both of them. Uh, yeah, you know, Pegasus, Barded Warhorse, big damage, it's your melee hero, it's the one that you want protecting your spellcasters, and they can dish out some damage. Believe me, uh, the Emir is pretty good at what it does, and it's definitely something that you're going to want to run in an army, just to have a little bit of extra help there, because at the beginning, you won't be so strong, and this isn't a very powerful roster, by the way, it's, well, barring the elephants and stuff. But um, yeah, you want uh, <laughs> you want a little bit of a hero here to just be a blender. Same reason why you want generic spellcaster heroes, and that's simply because that means you can have them supporting you, can have different laws of magic, you can have different utility. Hero squads are perfectly viable too in this game, so yeah, go insane and have some fun. Now, what we're going to do is talk about the roster, 
as you can tell, it's fully freaking stacked. There is so much to it, and I absolutely adore this. There are regiments of renown too, but I generally don't show them because I like for you to go and see the different aesthetics and so on because they do look different. But yeah, super, super cool. Let's jump in. Let's talk about pretty much, yeah, all the different types of units. We're going to go section by section, so infantry, missile infantry, uh, cavalry, and so on and so forth because there's a lot to talk about. Before we jump into the actual units, I just want to show you one of the elephants. This is the mount for a lord option, and goddamn, it looks so cool. Absolutely love this. Uh, I do want to also mention that there might be a little bit of a jump every now and then when it comes to starting stuff off, because this map is kind of buggy for some reason. But yeah, we're going to talk about everything in smaller clips, so as you can see, we're already into the melee troops, and the starts off with slaves, it works its way up. There are... Not a lot of different types, but this is actually an important thing, right? You're not here to build an elite infantry unit. You still do have them, because Palace Guards and eventually the Southlands Warriors are freaking insane. Uh, but you've got some pretty good standard stuff. You've got some spears, you've got some shields, you've got some uh, variety with the Corsairs and obviously the Pit Fighters too. The big thing here is that you've got a really good rounded base, and I think that's the big thing here. Every bit of the faction is well rounded in different locations. They might be on a little bit on the weaker side, but it's definitely a faction that does start to get really strong as you start expanding, just like any other faction would. Palace Guards, for me, have been some of my favorites, same as the Southern uh, Southlands Warriors that you'll be seeing a little bit later on. The main thing with these infantry troops is they're supposed to hold the line, and I think that they can do that quite well. Obviously, at the very beginning, you will be fighting against some Bretonians if you're playing as Jafar, for example, uh, which might be a little problematic, so corner camping is going to be a very good friend for you. Get that staunch line of spears out, you know? But, yeah, everything is just great. The units look awesome, thematic, it's something that... Remember, we never had a proper Araby army, we had that in Warmaster, but it wasn't really the full whack that everyone really hopes and dreams for, you know? Uh, I would love if we got that in the future. You never know in the future, but this is definitely how I kind of saw Araby in my own head. I've got them from the weakest tier to the highest tier, so you can kind of see the scale jump as it goes. And obviously the Palace Guard are just freaking godly. They are so good. Same thing with the Southern Warriors. And um, yeah, there's some really good looking models and they're just going to get even better as you start to see everything uh, flesh out a little bit more, so let's jump into the next stuff. What you will notice is that you don't have a lot of ranged troops on foot. So you've got your standard bowmen, which are pretty cool, I mean, aesthetically amazing, uh, but only 140 range. It's not the best range, but they're there to do some damage. Afterwards, you've got some Nomad Trackers, which are a little bit better. They've also got Vanguard and Anti-Large and so on. And then you've got another Vanguarding one, which is the Jezails. Those are single entity ones, uh, so they're not like the Skaven ones, they're not like the Cafein ones. Um, overall, the range is not your big thing here. You're going to be doing a lot of damage with big monsters, and you're going to be doing a lot of damage with uh, a lot of cavalry. Very, very fast cavalry. But your range is there to support that. You probably want to use some mounted range more, uh, but these ones are here to, you know, defend the walls and all the other things that you need to do, because this is Warhammer, and you're constantly in a state of war. Now, prepare yourself, because this is when we start looking towards all the really unique stuff. For example... There are camels, <laughs> and they look so cool. Also, there's hippos. Later down in this video, there are hippos, and they look absolutely adorable. You've got some fast-moving camel riders, which are very good to be shock cavalry, uh, vanguard too. There's some really heavy horses too, because keep in mind that you're going to have some of the best horses. Arabian horses are meant to be on par with that of elven horses, so you're going to get a really cool look with that. I... Absolutely love the look of them too. They look kind of, you know, painted. Uh, it's got that really Warhammer feel. Like if you look at the horse, um, you know, the fur and so on. But the camels are the big thing here. You've got some light shock camels. You've got some heavier camels too, which are really heavily armored. Obviously a little bit slower. Your camels aren't going to be running around like they're on, uh, uh, on warp stone. But they are there to be able to really hit it hard. And, yes, yeah, so cool, man. Again, I know I'm saying cool a lot, but god damn it, it's, it's just amazing. The hippos are just adorable. The hippos are just 
the cutest freaking things ever. And I think that's one of the things that I just recently said to the modder, because uh, I was speaking to Shaky a little bit, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> they're so cute, man. Obviously, you've got some very interesting uh, monsters up there. These are the Wagzen, and super cool, man. Super, super cool. It's got, uh, I think they're using the baseline animations of orcs and just scaled up a little bit. But yeah, hippos, man. So cool. So cute. And yes, I'm fully aware that you're not really supposed to get near hippos in like the real world because they will uh, absolutely demolish you. That's why we got them in Warhammer. So you can demolish other people. And by the way, yes, hippos do actually exist in Warhammer lore. It's something that's known from the Southlanders. It's just never really been established too much. Range cavalry is going to be a little bit of everything. So you've got some bowmen on camels. You've got some uh, really fast javelin throwers on horses. 92 speed, which is absolutely insane. Uh, some flying carpets, because, I mean, this is Araby, of course. They've got bows, too. And finally, some heavy-duty uh, camel gazelles, because camels are fast, and you might as well get a gunner on top, right? I mean... That's what I would do personally. And yeah, super cool, super fast. Again, speed is going to be in your benefit with this faction because you're going to want to really push as fast as possible, assault and harass your enemies and just really get in there. You don't have the best armor, but you definitely have the best speed. Well, compared to high elves. The Suneshi guys will still kind of catch up to you, but I don't think that's going to be much of an issue because if you're playing a campaign, the AI isn't really the best, is it? <laughs> so yeah, you've got Heavy Cav, you've got Light Cav moving around. There's so much that is in this faction, which is why I've been anticipating this mod for a long, long time, and I've been keeping up with all the updates that they've been posting because it is this good, man. It is this freaking good, and it's only going to get better. The OVN team obviously have loads of plans, and it's really giving Total War Warhammer that fleshed out feeling because I think I speak for all of us where we just want everything, if possible, because it just finishes at the world, and the world itself is massive. But yeah, let's continue because we have a few other things to talk about. We can't talk about an Arabian faction without talking about jinns and elephants and even big vultures. And not only that, enchanted ropes. There's a lot of really cool stuff. So jinns are single entity monsters. Very good at what they do. You've got the freaking vulture, which just takes me back. Because we've got vultures down here and they're just freaking annoying. So <laughs> it's just kind of funny to see them in game too. And obviously elephants and just... This is some of your big hitters, right? This is your monstrous cav. Uh, you'll see another one down the line with a freaking fez, which is just adorable. I love this. I absolutely love this. You really get some good cavalry charges. They're not as big as, like, Chaos Mammoths, and they're not supposed to be, right? These are standard size for African elephants, pretty much. Uh, so they're not supposed to be big, big, but they're big enough to be noticeable on the battlefield and start swiping across, just literally ripping apart everything that is in front of them. I mean... What can go wrong with that, right? What can go wrong? There's such cool monsters. The enchanted ropes are also really, really interesting. And uh, when you start to see the elephants like armored up and so on, they are just really, really special. Again, it's what I've always wanted from Warhammer Fantasy. Just a full-fleshed army like this. This is literally what I wanted. Uh, it's so cool. Obviously, do keep in mind that certain monsters can rampage and so on, so you'll have to keep an eye on them. But the idea is just slam into the enemy lines absolutely destroy them, organize an invasion, because when it comes to this, if you're playing especially as Jafar, kind of relive the um, original fall of Jafar, go and attack the Southern Realms, and then go push your way into Bretonia, because that was essentially was going to be the original plan anyway, and um, <laughs> see if you can relive the original little bit of lore that we had, and uh, kind of rewrite history a little bit, even though this is a few years in the future, but you get what I mean here, and it's just really fun for this, right? I don't know about you guys, but I tend to do a bit of a roleplay campaign myself, so yeah. By now, you've already seen the War Machine, so we have a Bolt Thrower, which is a Scorpion. We got some pretty cool stuff, honestly. The Bombard is probably my favorite, because it's kind of like just a moving house in a sense, uh, just because of the top of the house. There's some really, really cool stuff. I mean, even the Jin Carriage, which can summon in Jins, and we're going to talk about them a little bit later anyway. Uh, but it's just so cool, like the styling and the theming and just... The damage output is good too, obviously. I'm not like I'm not ignoring that because it's bad or something. It's actually quite good. It's just visually, you know, it's so important to me when something looks the part. So yeah, excuse me, but I'm gonna just keep fanboying and fanboying and fanboying. <laughs> it's finally here. I've been waiting so long. 
Like we've been getting loads of really cool modded factions, but this is the one that I've been waiting for the most. And yeah, I'm so happy to feel, finally be able to talk about this because I had a little bit of early access, uh, which was really, really cool once again for the modders, uh, from the modders. But yeah, let's talk about some Ifrits, right? Or Jin or Nymphs, whatever you want to call them because they've got a variety of different names. Yeah. <laughs> They are super, super cool. You even got enchanted books there, which uh, are really, really fun looking. They do a lot of damage. You, you'll be getting these throughout your campaign as you start naturally progressing through them. Obviously, the summoning uh, thing will be able to bring them out. And yeah, super cool. Some of them even have bound spells for them, which is really interesting. Because uh, that means that you're going to get a little bit of really strong firepower from them anyway. But then you're just going to get a little bit of extra support with like a wind blast and stuff like that. They are some of the most impressive things. Again, it's just so cool. Some of them are just like so unique too. But yeah, this is um, this is definitely the big thing here. And I'm so excited that it's finally here. Guys, this mod can be found in the description below because by the time that I'm posting this, the mod should be live. I've been coordinating with the lovely people at OVN uh, for uh, a little bit of time now. They promised that I was going to get early access. Uh, a while back, which was so cool of them. I will likely be streaming this later on. It'll be an afternoon stream. I don't tend to do those, but I mean, who doesn't want to play Araby, right? So <laughs> find it in the description below. Play it. You're going to have a lot of fun. If you want to pop by, I'll be on twitch.tv slash the great book of grudges, likely playing as the Sultan Jafar. And I'll see you all again very, very soon. If you don't, uh, there'll be a lot more faction focused stuff coming out for Warhammer the Old World as for tomorrow, but I had to have a time slot specifically for this because, yeah. <laughs> have a good day, guys. I'll see you all again very, very soon.